look. Oh, hey, are you here to learn about how to fit a kid's bike helmet? While it's always great to see kids wearing helmets on their bicycles, we see way too many kids with helmets that don't fit properly. They're either too big or too small. They might tilt far back or slide side to side on your child's head. Unfortunately, if a bike helmet isn't fit properly, it's not that much safer than no bike helmet at all. But no worries. In this video, we are gonna give you five tips to help you get the perfect fit for your child's helmet. Step one is to make sure the helmet is the right size. It seems obvious, but I see lots of kids wearing helmets that aren't even the right size. There's no way to adjust a helmet to make it fit if it's way too big or small for the kid. To size your child for a helmet, you want to measure their head circumference. You can do this with a cloth measuring tape, which is the easiest option, or if you don't have one, by using a string and then measuring it against a ruler. Measure around your child's forehead just above the eyebrows. Make sure to measure in centimeters or millimeters, or convert from inches to metric after the fact. You can then compare this measurement to the helmet manufacturer's sizing table and pick an appropriate helmet for your child or verify that their current helmet fits. If for whatever reason you can't physically measure the child, for example, maybe you're a grandparent buying the helmet as a gift, then you can use this table as a general guideline. Step two is to make sure that the helmet is snug. Helmets are designed to last for a while, which means they are usually adjustable. To make sure the helmet fits your child, the helmet will come either with multiple helmet pads or a rear fit dial, or both. With skate style helmets and cheaper helmets, you generally have to rely on padding. Other cycling helmets will have a rear fit dial at the back of the helmet that tightens or loosens the helmet. Compared to padding, fit dials do a superior job of tightening the helmet and getting a good fit. If you're shopping for a helmet, I'd highly recommend choosing one with the rear fit dial. The helmet is appropriately snug when your child can shake and roll their head without the helmet shifting. The front should be aligned just above your child's eyebrows, that same place where you measure their head circumference. If it's tilted backward and you are seeing large expanses of their forehead, it's either too large or needs to be tightened. At this point, I also like to ask the child how their helmet feels to them. As parents, we're often very eager to make sure that the helmet fits tightly, but if it's too snug, then your child's not gonna be comfortable and they're not gonna wanna wear the helmet. So Parker, how does it feel? Good. Step three is to adjust the side straps. The straps on either side of the helmet should come to a Y just below your child's ear. I generally find this is easiest to accomplish by adjusting it while they have the helmet on their head, but that's only if they'll stay still long enough for you to do it. Otherwise, you can use trial and error till you get it just right. On most helmets, you'll have to make this adjustment manually, though some helmets have adjustment-free side straps which make it a cinch. Step four is to adjust the chin strap. Tighten the chin strap so that it's snug, but not excessively so. You should be able to fit one finger between the strap and your child's chin, but no more than that. There might be some extra length of strap just hanging out. If this happens, I like to trim the strap so that there's about six inches or so remaining, and then fasten the remainder in place with a rubber band or hair elastic. Step five is to keep checking. Just because you fit your child's helmet once doesn't mean that's gonna be enough. Kids have the tendency to pull at their chin straps, to play with the dial at the back of their head. So if you notice that your child's helmet is starting to tilt backwards or seems wobbly, it's time to do this fit again. If you found these tips helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and also ring the bell. And if you subscribe, you'll get notified when we post new videos that might be product reviews or product guides and tips and tricks to help you have more fun biking with your family. Until next time, bye! Mom, do you know why you can hear pterodactyl P? No, why? Because the P is silent.